Hey squad, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mike and on today's episode, we are going back to EMS acronyms and breaking down the H's and T's for adults. It is important to determine a possible cause of cardiac arrest and the H's and T's can assist you in identifying those possible reversible causes. Now let's jump to the computer and explain exactly how the H's and T's can help you out. All right, guys, as previously said, when we're looking at H's and T's specifically, it's in a cardiac arrest situation, and we're looking at reversible causes, or at least possible reversible causes. So the first H I want to go over is hypovolemia, okay? Hypovolemia or a loss of fluid. So is there a loss of fluid? Do they have depleted fluid? Uh, are they bleeding out? Do they Are they septic and they have no fluid? Okay, if we reverse the fluid issue, possibly we, we regain some perfusion status. The second one is hypoxia, right? That decrease and lack of oxygen within the body's tissues. Okay, if the brain and heart and major organs do not become perfused with oxygen, they will die. So make sure that your patient is oxygenating well during your cardiac arrest. Third is hydrogen ions, otherwise known as acidosis, right? This is a buildup of acid within the body. So this could happen due to a long downtime via the, via the actual cardiac arrest, or it could have happened pre-cardiac arrest, and that is the reason as to why they went down in the first place. So maybe they're a DKA or they're a septic patient that is very acidotic to begin with. The next one I want you guys to remember is uh, kalemia. Okay, but hypo and hyper, okay? Hypo or low potassium or hyper or high potassium. Both can cause arrhythmias uh, and other dysfunctions of the cardiac muscle. So we wanna make sure that uh, we're looking for things like peak T waves or things like that that will cue us into possibly a potassium issue. The next is gonna be hypothermia here, okay? And hypothermia, again, being cold, right? The body doesn't like to be so cold that it can't function. Things slow down, heart rate slows down, eventually it slows down fat far enough that uh, you ultimately begin cardiac arrest. So hypothermia, warm your patient if they're cold, actively warm them. Okay, this last one, I started here because technically hypoglycemia is not on the list of current H's and T's via ACLS. However, I think it is really important that you guys remember to check a blood sugar, right? Blood sugar is definitely affected within cardiac arrest, and if you fix a blood sugar, you might be able to fix one of the possible causes of the cardiac arrest, right? So always check a blood sugar. So going over here to the uh, the T side, we're gonna start with a tension pneumo, right? Or tension pneumothorax. This is where your uh, you have a hole in your lung, the pneumothorax, that air is getting into the pleural cavity, causing uh, increased pressure and pushing the organs towards the other side of the chest. So it could crush the aorta, it could crush the heart, it could crush the lungs, it could crush everything in the thoracic cage, causing a decrease in perfusion and ultimately cardiac arrest. So ask your medic, hey, do you think there's a tension pneumo? Needle decompress this guy, right? Toxins, now when we're thinking toxins, we're thinking everything that could be toxic to the body. Organophosphates, uh, overdoses, um, you know, uh, a bee sting that might cause an allergic reaction. Anything that could be a toxin within the body to cause cardiac arrest. Next would be tamponade, and specifically cardiac tamponade. Cardiac tamponade is where you have a, uh, a increase in fluid buildup around the, around the heart within the pericardial sac, and it fills up and squishes, literally squishes the heart. So the heart can't fill properly, it decreases preload, and uh, decreases perfusion status because not enough blood is getting out of the heart per pump, okay? Thrombosis is the next one. Thrombosis is literally just a clot, okay? That's what I want you guys to remember about thrombosis. It could, the two main things that we're looking at is clots in your pulmonary systems, otherwise known as pulmonary embolisms or PEs, and clots in your cardiac cycle, your cardiac system, 
otherwise known as MIs, or myocardial infarctions, otherwise known as heart attacks for the lay people, right? So both of those are significant causes. Lastly, again, another star, I want you guys to remember trauma. Trauma is a significant uh, cause of cardiac arrest. Not too many times is it reversible. You can aid in, you know, the hypovolemic and the hypoxic portions of those, maybe the tamponades and the tension pneumos, uh, but, you know, really trauma is, a, uh, is just one to remember. Trauma can cause uh, cardiac arrest. You might not be able to reverse it, however. So guys, next cardiac arrest you're on, be sure to utilize the H's and T's and have a frank discussion with your partner about which may be a possible reversible cause of your patient's cardiac arrest. It may just be the difference between a secure order on scene and ROSC. Stay safe out there and I'll see you guys in the next video.